So from our side, um, relatively recently in the last few years, um, one of our research partners uh, was evaluating a, a very significant software change in our software. We, we now deliver our software in a fully adaptive, personalized way. And previously, years before, we delivered it in a procedural way. So these are two completely different ways for the child to interact with it. And um, before scaling the, you know, well, before scaling the, the iterated version, we really needed to know whether that was better. Um, so our research partner in Malawi conducted uh, you know, rigorous evaluation of the two side by side with you know, significant sample size and control schools. And, um, and the outcome was that the, you know, the new adaptive version was um, at least as good or better. Um, so then we felt you know, confident being able to to roll that one out, but we didn't. We wouldn't have felt um, you know, sort of ethically confident, of course, doing that before we'd had those results delivered. And obviously, if it had been the other way around, then of course we wouldn't have scaled that version. The, the, one of the most exciting randomized control trial that uh, I've ever led, and uh, uh, with my team, uh, with our implementation partner, was on a pedagogical model or instructional model to improve uh, foundational literacy and numeracy for age four to five to make them ready to go to um, primary school one. And along the way, and especially during the midline, we realized that um, it's not working. And I know you had earlier on asked the question of how do you communicate those kind of findings? So we found ourselves in that situation where we have to communicate that. But of course we did in a diplomatic way, but as usual, then there are always a back and forth and conversation. Finally, we all agreed that let's go to the field, both sides, implementer in their own direction, our own direction, and let's try to find out uh, why is this the case? And we came back, all of us with some good information shared and we were able to adjust the way things were being implemented. When we went out to do the final results, including conducting cost-effectiveness analysis, everything looked very, very good. And uh, you, could, you, could, you could see the energy in the room uh, uh, because of the findings. And uh, of course, it was like, ah, finally, given what we had seen in the in the uh, midline and given how the tensions were during the midterm and uh, we were all happy and glad that it was working it is one arguably one of the largest uh, randomized control trials that have ever been engaged in in, in sub-saharan africa about 600 uh, uh, schools and, and the, what was exciting and very very exciting about that is working with the implementer uh, trying to communicate very difficult uh, results and at the end of it all being taken positively and being used to improve and to adjust the way things are being done. And then finally coming to the end and seeing, yes, it's actually working. That to me was very, very good. And it's a very, very good example of relationship building, working together, how results can turn in all different directions. But remember at the end of the day, is when you communicate this to the policy audience, you want to communicate and to be sure that this works because they are gonna scare it up. And if they're scaring something that doesn't work, you can imagine the amount of resources, which we don't have the luxury for, or you can imagine the amount of resources that can be uh, lost. So well, I think um, the example I was citing in the interest of time will be the work we did some um, 13 years ago on the teacher education in Sub-Saharan Africa project. But one interesting side that is a positive one we picked was when we wanted to move away from only English to French and other countries, that was where true collaboration came between researchers and um, the developers. Because at that point, versioning of resources, versioning of um, apps, and all that needed to take into consideration the language dynamics, the cultural ethos, the technological capabilities, um, the sensitivities of you know, um, communication, gestures, and all that were things that needed to be taken on board. And the true partnerships that were fostered to be able to scale those barriers. The innovations we did in trying to communicate all these 
were things that were so positive in how it all rolled out that we were able to get Portuguese on board, where um, French on board was so massive, um, a positive in outcome of that relationship that are good examples for people considering proper and um, exemplary partnership between researchers and uh, developers for that matter.